they have picked their board members, uh, they have uh, presidents, pre directors, principals of private colleges, they are members of the BC Career College Association. My name is Dr. Yuri Pankratz, I'm the president of the Royal Canadian Institute of Technology. So I'm applying for the PCTA board member position. Unfortunately, I'm not able to be in this meeting. So that's why it's a taping, a recording of it. Uh, I'm teaching at the same time from 5.45 till 9.45 at SFU, unfortunately. I will consider a great honor to serve the educational community as PICTIA board member. I hope you will support uh, my application after you find out what I am going to bring to a position on the PC PICTIA board. I have about 35 years of experience in teaching in education at uh, university and college level in private and public uh, section, uh, section of the market. Uh, as a professor and a senior level administrator and as a president of the college. I am founding board member of the Non-Profit Education Society of British Columbia. I am also a member of the Advisory Committee on International Education and Immigration, uh, BC Career Colleges Association. I am also uh, a member of the board uh, for, of the Canadian and Global Peace Council, where, by the way, supervising character education in Canada. I'm also a member of the Canadian Academy of Independent Scholars and I was helping children of Chernobyl for almost 20 years. It's the biggest uh, man-made nuclear power accident in Chernobyl, Ukraine. I hope that uh, my long-term experience uh, in public-private education industry would benefit PICTIA board and PICTIA itself. Uh, I want to focus on a couple of points. Point number one, I want the PICTIA board to do all possible to lobby the BC government and beyond to establish equal rights uh, for public and private institutions, including off-campus and after-graduation work permits. Dear colleagues, 25% uh, of the first-year students at SFU do not survive because there are huge classes. 24% do not survive at UBC. We provide a very important sector of education in British Columbia and Canada in general. Uh, number two, uh, in June 2008 I was very frustrated. I was not, and I was not alone by the way. Too many international students from India were not able to get any study permits to Canada, to my school, to many private schools, to many even public schools. So at the same time, uh, the number of students to such countries as UK, Australia, New Zealand, even United States was skyrocketing. So I wrote a letter to the, as uh, I wrote a letter to the uh, that time Minister of Foreign Affairs of Canada, the Honorable David Emerson, and uh, I received uh, a very interesting response. It was huge support uh, because it was a letter complaint in general. So he responded to me, and an original letter he was sent to the minister was sent to the Minister of. Uh, Citizenship and Immigration Canada, at that time the Honourable Diane Finley. Uh, it was a very supportive letter and uh, on September 3rd, four weeks ago, in 2009 already, this year, when I uh, had an appointment with the uh, study permit supervising High Commission, Canadian High Commission in India, in New Delhi, I was amazed because I was met with the one document which the uh, study permit supervisor had in her hand. It was the letter from the Minister of Foreign Affairs. She mentioned to me at once that the number of students uh, from India to Canada is not shrinking anymore, that there are more than 40% uh, of students increase in study permits to Canada. It was very good. At the same time, I found out that they had no idea what is PICTIA. They didn't know the mission. They had no idea what does it mean to be accredited? What does it mean to be registered? And I think that PICTIA board and PICTIA staff should develop a special information about it and disseminate this information to all Canadian High Commissions abroad. Number three, I feel I'm qualified and experienced in updating and maybe even revising some sections of the BC PICTIA bylaw uh, concerning international students, especially refund policy. I think that refund policy should be for international students should be different than refund policy for uh, domestic students. Uh, concerning the refund policy, by the way, uh, there is another topic which is directly related to the refund policy. When students get the study permit to a specific private school and some of them want a refund, some of them, sometimes it happens the first day of classes even, the tuition fee is supposed to be given back directly to the students according to the PICTIA bylaw. 
I think it should be refunded directly to another school, but not to a student. Uh, I think the PICTIA board together with CIC should sit down and brainstorm and brainstorm this very controversial section of the PICTIA bylaw. Otherwise the school and PICTIA too have no idea what the student is doing during these two years. Uh, maybe the student works illegally and never went to another school. It's a possibility too. Number four, concerning the procedure of a new program curriculum approval by PICTIA, I think that should be different approaches to these program, to those programs that require industry approval first. If the program needs a special approval from the industry first, by the way, we even pay money to the industry to be approved, it means that PICTIA approval is just a rubber stamp procedure, which doesn't require $500 for registration per registration. If a program needs only PICTA approval, this charge may be, maybe, well, it's reasonable, but not for the first group of programs. Number five, I will support minimizing regulatory burdens on private schools without compromising the students' protection from unfair uh, practices. I want to quote one of the emails sent to me, just yesterday, by the way. With all the new bylaws and demands, I do not feel like our school is private anymore. In some ways, I feel like I'm working for PICTIA and I'm worried about losing a lot of flexibility and spontaneity that has kept our classes dynamic. There is some truth in this remark. I think PICTIA board should listen to the college voices and review some bylaws and some regulations. By the way, uh, revision doesn't mean uh, increase the number of bylaws, rules and regulations. A revision means, in some cases, getting rid of some outdated bylaws and regulations or change the language of some bylaws and make them more transparent, providing more flexibility to private colleges. This is my personal opinion. I will give you only one example. According to some PICTA regulations, the college is supposed to have not only online course for distance education, but also uh, equivalent on-site course for distance learning. While it's definitely outdated requirements, even public schools providing distance courses are not required to have an equivalent on-site course. This is just one example. There are many other examples sent to me by my uh, college colleagues. Uh, uh, also, it's not a bad idea for PICTIA board to review all bylaws and find out that there are no bylaws that put educational uh, institutions in some legal risk. Then nobody will be able to challenge PICTIA's legal authority to make a range of bylaws or execute the existing bylaws. Number seven, PICTIA board should encourage PICTIA to have a more professional, user-friendly website, it's for sure. And the last one, I also hope that PICTIA board will manage to develop some type of cooperation with other provinces in order to reach some uh, common standards in education, quality assurance and some other policies too. I hope that now, when you know my vision and what I want to bring to a position on the PICTIA board, you would support me and vote uh, for me at this election. Uh, should you have any questions, concerns, do not hesitate to be in touch with me. Many already have been in touch with me, so, and I answered to many questions within my speech, by the way. I will represent not just my school and PICTIA. I will represent you all if I become the PICTIA board member. Thank you.